Hello everybody. So today I am going to show you how to make these absolutely adorable little mini candy corn plushes. You can see how he's only like what maybe four or five inches tall. He's super super cute and he's really quick to work up. Uh, the nice thing about him is that there's no pieces that you have to sew together. Um, the only sewing would be just closing up the very bottom at the very end which I will definitely show you guys how to do. So a couple of things that you'll need to get started is you'll need uh, three different colored yarns and obviously you can use white, orange, and yellow or you can use whatever colors you like quite honestly. Um, a stitch marker will be helpful to marking the beginning of each row as we will be working in a spiral. A set of eyes if you would like to put eyes on them. A needle for sewing up the bottom at the end. Today I am going to be using an, an H hook or a 5 millimeter hook and then a pair of scissors to cut the yarn at the end. Let me move all this stuff up out of the way a minute and we will get started. So let me get my white. And we are going to be working starting with a magic circle. And because this magic circle is going to be very small because it's the very top of our ghost, um, I'm only just going to do it between my middle finger and my ring finger because I don't need a very big one. And make sure this side you cross over the two lines. Oop. Trying to catch that first chain just to make it easy. There we go. And then just tighten it all up. So now into the magic circle, you are going to put six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's always a good idea, especially on these first rows, to double count because if this row is wrong, the whole thing is not going to be, uh, the numbers aren't going to come out quite right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So now I'm going to take the tail from my magic circle and I'm going to close the circle. But we are not doing a slip stitch into this first stitch because we're going to be working in a spiral. We're going to go right into stitches. So this next round, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing one single crochet and then one single crochet increase. So basically it means one single crochet here and then two single crochets here into the next stitch. I'll try and get it to focus a little better. And it'll be one here, two here, one here, and two here. So we're going to put our first one into this first stitch here and then I like to add my stitch marker to the first stitch of each row because it just helps me to keep count better um, so that I know when I need to start um, whatever uh, stitches I need to do for the next row. Okay, so there's my one and we're going to put two in here for my increase. And then one, and then two, and then one, and then two. And now I'm back to my stitch marker. So I know I'm done with that row. So for the next row, what we're going to do is we are going to do one single crochet, one single crochet, and then an increase, which will be two single crochets. So let's see if I can get this. I know the white is a little bit harder to see on camera sometimes. So we're going to do one single crochet here, one single crochet here, and then two here. So one, one, two, one, one, two. 
So I'm going to take out my stitch marker, put my first single crochet in here, and then reapply my stitch marker. And one, and then the next one's going to be an increase, so we're going to do two in there. And sometimes your work might try and curl up on you like this. You want to try and curl it this way, curl it down. Okay, it'll just make it easier um, as we're working around the rounds and stuff like that if it's curling that way. One. One, one, and two. There, and now we're back to our stitch marker again. So for row four, the next row we're going to do, we are going to do one single crochet into each stitch going around. And at the end of this row, you should have 12 stitches going around in your circle. I know some people like to know exactly where their stitch counts are supposed to be. So this row should be 12. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Just like that. So now we are going to do our color change to orange. Now you can do your color change however you would like to. Um, I know some people like don't mind the knots, um, but I knew I learned a, a well new to me way of doing it. So I'm going to pull this dish apart just a little bit, and I'm going to cut my white. And I'm also going to trim the tail on my magic circle because I don't. It annoys me when it gets tangled up with my working yarn. So we'll just end that now. So let me grab my orange. There we go. Now I put it in my hand the way I would normally hold it. And I know some of you have probably already seen this or probably already do it this way but I pulled a loop through the orange to finish off this single crochet. And if this white starts coming a little bit loose, just give the tail a tug and it'll tighten it back up. And then I will do my first single crochet for the next row with the orange. And I try and hold the two tails like this so I can crochet over the top of them. And it was a knotless, color change. And I haven't had any, I mean I've used this a few times on a few of my different creations and I haven't had an issue with um, the yarns coming apart. Either the white pulling out or the orange pulling out. Um, and I think the big difference is having the bits of the tail and then crocheting over the top of them really helps. Uh, it helps secure them into place so that they can't pull out as easily. So now on our first row of this orange here, where we're going next, we are going to do three single crochets and then a single crochet increase. So it'll be one, 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 two, one, 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 two, and then the rest of the way around. So I already did the first one. So here's number two. And here's number three. 
and then I'm going to do my increase here. Now by the time that you've gotten far enough to do your first increase, if you still have one of them that has a tail, you're probably pretty safe to be able to cut it off or trim it shorter there. And then we'll just continue with that um, three single crochets and then an increase going around. So one. two, three, and then an increase. One, two. One, two, three, one, and two. So we have the, this part of your candy corn might look a little bit pointed, but once we go and stuff it and stuff all the stuffing in there, it will round it out just a touch so it's not so pointed. I kind of use my fingers to round this one out just a little bit more. But this is what we have going so far. So I'm sure you can guess it, but our next row for the orange is going to be four single crochets and then a single crochet increase. So it's going to be one, 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 increase. One, 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 uh, one, increase. And we'll be doing that three times around. So let me pull out my stitch marker. There's one. Two, three, four, and then we'll do our increase. One, two, one, two, three, four. And then our increase, one, two, one, two, three, four, and then our increase, one, two. Okay. Now, just like we did for the yellow, the last row of the orange is going to be one single crochet per stitch. So this time we should have 18 stitches. Sorry, I had to do some quick math in my head. <laughs> so one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So this will be number 18. But here is where we're going to switch to yellow. So I'm going to do my color change like I did on the last one. Cut my orange and I give it a little bit of a tail so that I don't have to worry about this loop pulling it out too easily. So let me drop my orange and grab my yellow. Oop, that 
That was a little too much tail on that. <laughs> Grab a loop of my yellow, pull it through, and then my first yellow My first yellow single crochet. Now it takes a couple of times to get used to how to hold things and stuff doing that. Um, it definitely was not something I easily just did the first time I was watching doing it. I actually did several of these candy corns doing this um, before I got it pretty pretty good at doing it. So if it's a little bit difficult, it, it, it was for me too. And I've been crocheting for like 25 years. So I get it. You're It's all right. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I'm going to put it into that first yellow one that I just did. And now this row is going to be five single crochets and then an increase. So here's my first one. Two. Three. four, five, and then my increase. So now I'm just going to snip off this extra yellow. increase for this row or round sorry okay so here's our little candy corn coming along so next row for yellow is going to be six single crochets and then a single crochet increase I'll take my needle out Two, three, four, five, and six, and then we'll do a single crochet increase, one and two. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then an increase, one and two. One, two, three, four, five, Six, and then our increase one and two. All right, and just like we did with the white row and the orange row, the this row for our yellow is going to be one stitch, um, one single crochet per stitch going around. So this time you should have 24 stitches by the time you get all the way around. Okay. 
these are these little candy corns are such a great idea for adding to home decor or giving away as little Halloween gifts because they're they're very cute and they're they're relatively quick to do. They don't take very long and they don't take a lot of materials because they're so small. Now, if you wanted one to be bigger, um, you can use this same pattern and use plushy yarn and your cu or cucumber, I'm sorry, your candy corn will come out being like probably three times bigger than these ones are. I haven't actually made one in plushy um, with this particular pattern to be able to show you how big it is, but it will be a lot bigger just because plushy yarn itself is bigger. All right, coming up to the end of this row. All right, now I'm gonna pull this loop just a little bit because now we're gonna put the eyes in. So I'm just taking my hook out for a minute um, so it doesn't just fall out while we're doing this part. Now the eyes, um, you can kind of put the eyes wherever you want. I mean, I made, let me grab one. I made one that was a Cyclops just because it was cute and it was a lot of fun. So your eyes can be however you want, but you kinda ish is like the middle of the orange row. But again, I mean, if you wind them higher and you wind them up here, you can do it however you want. Um, but typically it's kind of the middle of the orange and then like four or five spaces apart. So I am going to, and what I kind of do is I kind of put one in and then I just kind of look to see how and where I want the oops, how and where I want the other one to place. You know, and if I don't like it, I can always move them up. These ones have a little bit of a brown edge on them, so they're not the solid black ones, but I think that's gonna look good for him like that. So now I'm gonna add the backings. And you, you want to make sure you snap them on as far as you possibly can. It makes them as safe as possible. There, yeah, that looks cute just like that. All right, so now we're going to, we can put our hook back in. We're gonna do, we're gonna start closing up the bottom of our candy corn now. Um, and we're gonna stuff it uh, here right before the end. So don't worry about the stuffing part that we haven't done that yet. So let's move the stitch marker. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do one single crochet and then a single crochet decrease. And then one single crochet and a single crochet decrease. So we'll do the first single crochet and then I'll show you guys how I like to do my decreases. So I insert the hook yarn over and pull up a loop, and then insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three. So you're essentially turning two single crochets into one single crochet up here. And then we'll do one regular single crochet, and then we'll do another decrease. And we will repeat that all the way around our little candy corn. Oop. Let's start that over. And we will have one more row of decreases. And then we're gonna stuff our candy corns uh, and then we'll sew them closed. So we are almost done with these cute little guys. Alrighty. 
So now for the next row, what we are going to do is we are going to do eight single crochet decreases. So no um, one single crochet and then decreases. We're going to go straight into just decreases. Now, if you guys get these like, get a little closer, where it looks like, you know, the hole is a little bit bigger here, that's okay because we're going to use that hole when we sew it all closed at the end anyways. And it's on the bottom. So unless somebody really like picks it up and is like, I want to see the bottom of it, you know, it's not something that's going to be visible. So it's going to be okay. And then here's the last one. All right, so now from here, um, we can go ahead and cut the yarn because we are done um, with rows, but make sure you leave a good size tail on it because we're gonna have to sew the very bottom close. So I usually leave like, I don't know, a few inches. I'd rather have too much than to run out. And then I do a chain one and pull it all the way through because it'll put a knot in there while we stuff our candy corns. Let me take out my stitch marker because we're all done with that. Now to stuff your candy corn, you can stuff it with whatever you want. Um, I typically use polyfill just because I have it, um, but you can use scrap yarn. You can use a combination of polyfill and scrap yarn, whatever you want to do. Now is the time to stuff it. And you can stuff it as much or as little as you want. If you want it to be super soft or super firm, um, you can do it to whatever your liking is. But I always like to, I don't know, squish up my polyfill a little before I stick it in. I don't know why. I think it's just because I like playing with the polyfill. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to put a little bit more in because I like making mine um, a little more on the firmer side. Oh, that might have been too much this time. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. And then I always try and make sure, like you don't want your eyes to be all crooked because they got caught in the polyfill and then, you know, got pointed towards the head. So now they're looking down at their feet or at the bottom. So I was just trying to align my eyes up a bit. Make sure he's looking super snazzy. Alrighty, and then we'll get our needle. Thread it. Now, my first stitch, I always like to come from the inside to the outside. It's a personal preference. It, you can go whichever way you want, but then we're just gonna weave through the tops of these stitches so that we can cinch it close. Okay, so now here's where we started from. So I've gone all the way around. And then just make sure your filling's on the inside, stays on the inside, and there we go. Now I do just a couple back and forth little knots to make sure everything stays closed and stays together. And this one I try and double knot 
just to make sure it's not going to come apart at all. And another thing that I like to do, which again, you don't have to do if you don't want to, but I also run the yarn up right through the middle, through the top, because that way, if it does start working loose, it's got to go, it's got to pull the yarn the whole length of the body of the candy corn before it actually comes undone. So it gives you a chance to catch that something's going on before um, it's hard to fix. And then I just kind of squeeze the top for that yellow piece to go back in and it's gone. And that is our cute little candy corn. I'm going to add him to my little candy corn army that I've been creating. So you can see on this one I put, actually I ended up putting my eyes just a little bit lower on this guy than I did on this guy. But even by himself, he's super cute and him by himself are super cute. So like I said, you can put eyes however you want on your candy corns. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I would appreciate any likes and shares and following my channels that you guys can do. And if you guys like um, these tutorials, um, you can also find me on TikTok where I do live tutorials every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'll put the link in the description below. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye!